Okay. Okay. Go for it. Okay. Uh, yeah. So the sort of main data flow based validation stuff got merged prior to me showing up to meetings. Yay. Uh, yeah. So, but so it's been on nightly for a few weeks now, and there's been basically we run the two uh, validators in parallel and IC. If there's a mismatch in the errors that they would admit, so I've just been fixing those as they pop up. And one of those was mentioned last time from, I believe it was Taylor, who I don't know, but I I think they mentioned something had gone awry in Fuchsia. But that has now, I believe, been fixed. And then besides that, I've been trying to get like const evaluation to take on a more official status by trying to get, like, get people excited about a weekly meeting and opening that PR on the uh, compiler team repo. OK. Do you um, see? I don't do you think you have, I guess there was this question, who should lead it and whether you want to do a weekly meeting at all? Um, do you have? So, so Oliver, um, Oliver is working on as many companies than he has less time. Ralph doesn't have lots of time. Uh, but, well, Oliver should maybe lead it anyways. Uh, Eddie B could perhaps help lead it, exactly more as maybe you would. Um, I could, I am I would probably be the like, line same way as Okay, that seems reasonable. I don't, I mean, I think we shouldn't like try to, if we don't have bandwidth to like, like it's fine, what am I trying to say? Naming leads who are too busy to do anything is kind of not always very productive. Uh, yeah. But on the other hand, we should just scale our expectations to what we can agree on to expect. Yeah, I, I think I, I think we don't have needs to have weekly meetings for this right. working group right now. But like I don't if we say we do, people will probably not show up anyways. Um, maybe what? just keep it low key for now and then scale as we as things happen. Yeah. I think having a channel and a citation, and I think the biggest thing would be sort of just having a little bit of a plan, which we kind of do um, around, like we're currently working on this, uh, what do you call it, promotion. And I guess we're hoping to lead this to some sort of RFC or at least specification of what should get promoted or not. Is that, I sort of remember us saying that, did we say that? Yeah. Um, the other thing that's come up that seems relevant is the, Felix, you were looking at like what constants can appear in match expressions. I guess it's pretty, it's, it's pretty different. From this. That's probably <laughs> more const generics actually. Yeah, it certainly intersects const generics quite a bit. What is um 63A12 that is, that says enabling if and match is soft blocked on implementing this? Oh, um, that's the PR, Eddie B's PR that splits promotion out from the existing path. So I have split validation out, but in order to do promotion, we still have to run the old linear pass, and we'd like to split promotion out from that as well, run that in compatibility mode, and then we can remove the old pass, which is quite tough to reason about and does both completely. OK, for some reason I thought you, you had already broken out the promotion, but it's just the validation that's now being done separately. Yeah, this is some, somehow become a compiler team meeting number two. Yeah. All right. Well, that seems good. <laughs> um, we can discuss offline a bit. Yeah, but I think the the immediate goals are like uh, working on promotion and and stuff, and trying to specify it in the Rusty guide and maybe maybe the reference, depending right. on. How, how the Rusty guy goes, and then if if and match and loop are probably the, the things we we want to work on and try to ship. Yep. The um, 
So for the unwind FFI stuff, I don't know. Kyle, are you here? Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, hello. Uh, I have a document that I put together, and I linked it in the Discord. So um, okay. I am okay. on a single screen at the moment. So if you could open that up, I will discuss each point. I'll copy it in. If I can find it. Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, someone already did. Oh, that's a good idea to put it in there. Uh, could you actually open, open yeah. the link so I can see it? Also, so everyone else can see it. All right, so I split this up into project repo activity and other stuff. Um, and I put it in what I hope is a reasonable order. So the first, so I just wanted to give kind of an update on kind of concrete accomplishments, which essentially just means things added to done in the repo, um, and then talk about some other details. So the first and maybe to me the biggest win this week is in terminology, we, uh, let's see, we made a, a a documentation that specifies a difference between undefined behavior and unspecified behavior. And those, of course, are kind of known from other systems languages. Um, but the new item we're adding that's not really known is an idea of to be defined behavior. And for our purposes, that phrase only has meaning within the context of a working group. And it means behavior that that working group considers within the scope of its um, charter and, and that it plans to specify. Uh, and so when a working group brings things to stable, it'll either be well-defined behavior or um, if it's still kind of TBD, it'll be automatically considered unspecified behavior. So this means that the work to just do so this means that the working group would propose uh, some definition to us, like the language. Eventually, yeah. Assume. Yes, and it, so we had a, um, I'll come back to this actually, because we had a um, discussion about what it would mean for TBD to hit stable. Um, and that's listed further on down. So for now, I think I'll just continue mentioning other things that hit the repo. One is, the, we have a roadmap section, which are the technical details of our plans. Um, so they're not plans about how the working group will operate, they're plans about um, the actual unwind specification. So these are like kind of pre-RFC documents. Yeah, so if you go, you'll see there's a little table. These are kind of the steps we think we would try to do and in the order and their current status. And you can click on them and find out a little bit like what that actually might mean, and so on. Um, we had some discussion back and forth on this. Uh, yeah, and then for for meta details, we have a project planning document. Um, I'm, yeah, it's just sort of here's what we're doing. Um, that one hasn't had as much activity because uh, the technical stuff is more fun, but. Uh, we will continue trying to update what we're planning to do in that document. Um, the main contribution output from this group uh, that we're working on is a zero with RFC, um, which will, it, it kind of has two intents. One is to replace RFC 2753, which is the minimal uh, stabilize unwind RFC. Um, but it would be just stabilizing the ABI string and having this new unspecified behavior that, you know, if you wrote about it in the Rust reference, you would say it's unspecified, but talking about it within the working group, we consider it TBD. Um, and then on the meta level, we would also announce the group, share links to the Zulip and the repo, um, and invite people to participate there 
rather than waiting on future RFCs or, you know, that kind of thing. So, Wait, but, like, but if you say it's t TBD, uh, doesn't, doesn't that mean we want, doesn't that mean that you will define the unwind mechanism? Wasn't that like something we specific didn't want to do? No, unspecified behavior is, uh, is a valid state yeah, for stable but, function features. And right, I think what you said, said, but you said it would be TBD for the working group, so that yes. implies you want to specify it. Specify. I, we do. That's the whole point of this working group. I think there might be some confusion though about what <laughs> what exactly we're talking about. What like the thing we want to eventually specify is when a rust panic hits this ABI, it gets represented in some way. Um, we would specify that. That doesn't say anything about what happens when a rust panic propagates within rust functions. Um, right, right. So there's some conversion I to and from the natives. Maybe the point of confusion is TBD doesn't mean to be fully defined. We're not trying necessarily, it doesn't necessarily mean this no, feature I think it, is going to completely leave the unspecified state. Right. I, I think, I, I think, can you go on to my question with respect to what you're, you're okay. to today? But I, I find, I find the, the description of un, unspecified behavior somewhat vague. Like, when I, when I think about unspecified behavior, I think that there, it's not, this, I agree with Ralph that it's not the same as undefined behavior, but I think, like, Unspecified behavior is sort of uh, an instantiation uh, for some configuration of the abstract machine. And uh, as a user, you should assume that all instantiations are possible and your program should work for all of them. Uh, I mean, I think so a good in, analogy is like Rust, the layout of a Rust struct or other things right. like that. Yes. That's a, that's permanently um, unspecified behavior. Like, Nico, could you open you the as, as terminology here. document? But I, um, but I, this also feels sort of like, sort of like the same as implementation defined. Um, I sort of want the the definition that would be useful for uh, for me for unspecified behavior would be that not only is it unspecified but compilers are not allowed to specify it. Like the compiler team cannot specify this behavior. Because like we we want to keep this freedom open and if it one specific implementation said what it is, then they have to stick to that like forever. So unspecified would it be strictly weaker than implementation defined or implementation specified? Mm, yes. I, I, I feel like this is a little bit a field slightly. Uh, I mean, the main thing for us was getting clarity around sort of, we had a lot of back and forth about some of these distinctions, right. but like we have talked about, should we open an RFC that tries to buy these terms so that we can stop arguing about them from time to time? No, uh, no. I think, no. yeah, one thing that did they come up, oh, I was just going to, let me just finish the sentence and then go, but was that there's a lot of things that come under unspecified behavior. It sort of comes down to why is it unspecified, right? And it might be that we, as you say, we permanently, like with structs or something, we never attempt to specify it because we always want to change it. It might be, and that's where TBD comes in, like something that we just haven't figured out what we want it to be yet, but we know that we need to eventually say what it is. And there's a range right. in between of stuff where like, eh, maybe, maybe we'll say, maybe we won't, we're not sure yet. But I think, yeah, I think that that's a good. Um, I think it depends on, on the specific thing uh, we're talking about. Uh, defining the terms in, in, in RC is probably not that useful. What I think would be useful is like talking at length what we may and may not do for this specific feature. Right. Something, so, something where that would say that as opposed to an RFC? No, in the RC. Which would oh, I thought I, I missed what you said immediately after saying that it, an RFC would not be the appropriate place. I said that. I think he meant I, that sorry, an RFC. Defining terms. I must have misheard you. 
that like oh yeah a general yeah. or defining of terms would be too general I think that's yeah yeah, yeah. Um, sorry the, 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 you do yeah. think that that a general term definition rfc would be too general yeah i think that would be vague but i think um the, the, Defining what the, the terms mean in this specific RFC uh, would be good. Like describing, describing, not only defining the terms, but like saying what they. Uh, so, like, what I, I might feel the opposite. Them? I might feel the opposite on that one because I've seen a bunch of Discord conversations where people are arguing about, well, that's not really UB because you're allowed to do it. It's just not stable. So it's sort of UB, but it's kind of not UB. And if we this had a yeah. good words for, for exactly what this while. stuff is, that would be nice. Maybe, maybe then you could, like in the RFC, say what we are allowed to do without actually giving any of these terms. But that would also be possible. I mean, to, uh, Scott, to your point, I think that um, really it's going to be difficult for us to have. I mean, even though UB has a, a formal definition, it's kind of going to be hard for Rust to apply that in many cases because yeah. we specifically don't have a standard. I mean, by the C++, in the I mean, C++ sense, we're in the early 90s where everything is undefined. Okay. I Which, think you, you know, be... didn't stop anyone from building stuff, but... I yeah. want to, like, anyway. pay attention to the clock. I feel yeah, like, so, yeah. There was yeah. one point okay, where we so, wanted a little feedback on, right? Yes, that's coming. Um, so let's just keep scrolling, I guess. Uh, the resolves concerns section, um, this is another thing that I think might be useful for uh, other working groups to adopt, depending on how it goes. Um, we had a long discussion um, in Zulip, and it was actually about this terminology stuff and TBD things hitting stable. And so Nico wrote up a, a document here saying, here's the discussion we had, and here's the, and, and why it was a controversy, and here's the trade-offs and resolution. Um, so I didn't want to talk too much about this specifically, because that's kind of what we just talked about. Um, but recording these so that you don't have to go to the Zulip to see what the controversy was yeah, uh, is mm -hmm. kind of our plan. All right, and then I think we're on to, yeah, miscellaneous stuff. Um, okay, so I did want to, let's see. Um, I think the main, was this zero RFC thing was what I wanted to bring up a little bit. Okay. There were like two different, two slightly different visions. I put a sketch, which was basically how much unspecified, right? As we're going to, this initial version was very minimal. It simply said we have this ABI. Uh, it's on these certain targets, but all details about any targets, it, uh, it doesn't have any details. Like for every target that it's supported on, it's currently unspecified. All details are unspecified, except that um, there's some way to convert a Rust panic into the native format and back again, such that like one Rust function calling an extern C unwind Rust function works. Um, and Gunza Blug's version went a little further. Uh, we were thinking we would leave we would sort of start with that minimal one and then like say, go through, okay, let's define for the, um, for like the Linux target or something. We'll have an RFC on that, that details how that's gonna work. Um, basically the question was, does anyone have an opinion about which granularity should we try for a bigger, slightly bigger scope? Um, nobody cares at all. I don't know. No, I think the comments, but the things. Wait, can you summarize again the, the choices, or maybe I should just read the things? Yeah, like, the choice is sort of like, should we try for the most minimal scope possible in terms of we want to introduce this ABI and basically leave almost everything else unspecified about how it interacts, um, but, but, but to be determined? Or do we wish to kind of enable already some complete use case when we introduce it? which would probably be unwinding across uh, frames that don't have destructors, native frames, which basically works, which is the main thing people actually want to do right now. Um, as, I think as long as we are, we don't, the important part for me is that we don't specify the, the uh, 
unwind AI for, for us and we are able to, to change it. And possibly we need to add some chains for, for FO5. Uh, and I think that like for important target tier one targets, we should remain free to change things. I think that's been uh, preserved in both versions. Right. All right. We'll figure it out. Cool. Should we maybe let's go to something let's else? Just yeah, I was going to say other... let's move on from it. I, 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 as a response, to go to the, the question. I, I think my main attitude about it, about the choice between the two things, is there's sort of a choice for this specific RFC, but also there's a choice of like what precedent you want to set going forward for like if you want to set a pattern for how future RFCs are drafted. And I still have made my mind of it, which I prefer of the two options, but it's something to maybe think about in terms of what we want to set yeah. as a pattern. I think there's probably a reasonable compromise here in that I'll have to look, but I, I think the, my RFC may be too spare and the other one may be just a little too far, but there's probably like some sections of it that can be pulled out and we're good to go. But I do feel like I want a little bit of hurry on this because it's been dragging out. The whole point of this was to add this API and be done. Uh, or like do it, get us to a slightly better state um, so we can move on the other things that are blocked on it. But uh, well, it would be a good idea in, in either case to like if you if you use one approach and the other one the other approach doesn't get included, the other approach could be like part of the RC through like the alternatives. Yeah, sure. That probably is already the case with them too. So I don't think there's anything major to report on these other items. I want to kind of get down to triage because we got some things here. Right. The the current stuff I will just check because. Yes. So let's see. There's the bang. Do we want to talk about bang? It's going to take probably some time. Here. They are here. They are here. They're here oh. now. They weren't here before. Hello. Yeah, I'm looking at site. Are there other things in? We could. Is there short items we want to hit before bang? That's probably what I'm trying to ask. Um. I think into future we kind of settled last time. Well, maybe do you maybe just ask both if they agree with uh, our conclusions? Oh, uh, yes, yes. Everything on the thread that I had to say about into future. The only thing, right? So we I wrote up this. I think is what we agreed last time. We'll basically land this as long as we have some motivations and an RFC bot merge. The only question then is this design question of whether to have in, I don't know where it is now, but whether to yeah, have that into item or whatever, two associated yeah, types. Anyone, did, did Sean disagree with that? Because I, I don't. I don't think so. I think it's probably just going to happen. So. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, Felix, did you ever get a chance to look at those things like? Fully integrate were, derived helpers or state. There was a couple things. Yeah, I looked at a couple of them there. I think there are three assigned to me, and I've only looked at two of them. Um, but I think I've written comments on both of these at this point. If, so if you want to summar want me to try to summarize it, I can. But I need to know which one we're looking which one my own we're looking at. That would be um, yeah. Okay, so this one, the main summary I have here is that um, uh, the, the change itself is about um, how we handle these helper attributes that could appear inside, inside of the syntax. And I guess what we did before was, I don't, I don't quite understand exactly what the behavior we had before was in terms of like how, result, like how it was even resolved or if there were uninterpreted atoms that just were being handled by the, the macros. But in any case, um, the, 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 if you look at my comment at the end, I tried to get clarity from Petrochenkov about there's a test case that sort of shows, hey, look, here's all these cases that, um, you see now, you see it, you see errors being emitted because it's ambiguous what this attribute denotes. And so I said to Petrochenkov, look, I see all these cases that are erroneous, that are, that are now errors before were not errors, but they are marked as fixed means, as in they were known to be things that we did not think should be accepted. Um, and so that I treat as a compiler bug that we are within our rights to at least try to change. 
arguably we should keep our eye out for crater breakage, but you know, I don't, I don't currently think it's worth a warning cycle or at least not worth a warning cycle without seeing some evidence of, of problems. But the other thing that I was worried about was I saw two cases in the, in the test case where it didn't cause an error. It just was like, Oh, this is okay. Um, this instance of this kind of helper attribute. And so I just wanted to be clear with Petrochenkov in those cases, is there any, where if you had a situation where that was accepting the code before and it accepts the code after, is there any possibility that you actually see a silent change of behavior? Um, and mm -hmm. Petrochenkov has assured me, no, that should not happen. So okay. based on that feedback, I was like, okay, let's, this seems okay. Now there's still the question about whether there's potential breakage, like how do we evaluate the, the impact of this? And Peter Tenkov's attitude about that was, well, let's just land it and see. We've got, we've got these, uh, you know, these trains for a reason. It um, sounds like you approached this from, from a very like C compiler centric perspective. Did you like think about the design? Is this what we want? Uh, it seemed saner than what we had before. If that's what you mean, <laughs> um, is it what we want in the end? Uh, I don't know a better option. I guess based on my understanding, of what's doing. So, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it seems it seems right. Like it's one of these things where I'm looking at I'm looking at what he describes and looking at what it's doing. I'm like, yeah, this seems better than we had before. Like they had it. It just seems like something where everyone's known this was a problem. This was a little strange. In yeah. The past. It's just going yeah. through a sort of the same process as other attributes. Sounds like I should have it closer to them. What about stabilized um, proc macros generating macro rules items? Yeah, this one I said okay to last week or something, or maybe, I don't remember how long ago. Oh, it's already um, merged, okay. It's just, <laughs> it's good. off the list. It's already merged, I think. Yeah. Never mind okay. that. Great. I can mute what about again. the uh, stabilized attribute macros on inline modules? I haven't looked, that I did not even realize. I, I, I see it was assigned to me, but I did not see it fast enough to try to stick okay. it in before okay. this meeting. Okay. We'll leave it for next time. Okay, so maybe I can talk about it instead. Basically, um, <clears throat> so it allows attribute macros on inline modules, but not like not even non inline inline modules. But then it uses sort of a visitor to check recursively if there are any inline modules within the uh, non inline modules within the inline module, which is uh, sort of like a hack. Uh, very easy from the compiler's perspective. Is there any example of one? Not great to specify. Well, and it, I assume it rejects it if it sees an, a non inline module in the, in the scope of it? Or what? Mm, what does it do? I think so, yeah. It's an example of what this allows. I'm trying to find something here. I guess this. Let's see. Macro, macro attributes are now supported on inline module items, modem, la. Uh, the behavior is the same as for attributes on any other items available in state. It seems like a good thing. Um, like this, basically, some proc macro here that processes the module. Okay. okay. This seems unambiguously good to me. Just what's the concern? If any. Uh, and and uh, yeah, so it. So if it finds, um, just to explain the behavior, it, um, looking at the code, um, basically walks the AST and if it finds, uh, if it, it looks inside a module, uh, in the inline module, and if it finds a non-inline module inside it, then it will error. Yeah, it seems a little bit like you can put attributes on, on inline modules unless they contain mod statements. It seems like kind of a, like just kind of a complicated rule to, Nice. Yeah, but like, there's a reason why we're not. Uh, yeah, but them, yeah, I know. But an, an easier rule to learn is you can't put attributes on modules. Yes. Uh, yeah, I agree. But less good. So, like, like, uh, but if there, like, what happens if you have a module statement inside of a function and you put a macro attribute on the function? That's. Uh, Probably this a worse question. That would be our, our luck. Um, we should never have allowed module attributes and functions, but I forget. We, I think we yeah. got stuck with it for various reasons. Yeah. Um, in, in module declarations functions, you mean? Or, yeah. 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 Especially, uh, 
with path attributes without a non inline model. I don't see actually a test case for that in in the in the attributes and what would fail. So that would actually be something to, to test. But okay. I also why should this be allowed but not uh, custom attributes like bang attributes on the top of a module that doesn't contain submodules, like on top of the file. Um, I'm not sure. Like that seems. I'm assuming that's also the same sort of issue about it, the, the question about the loading versus expanding. Although I guess obviously there you have to load before you see them, but yeah. It sounds like we're not ready to to stabilize anything. It seems like we have a lot of questions. This is definitely the part of it that we definitely know how it works. But it's like maybe we should figure out how the rest of it works before we stabilize it and then stabilize that, unless there's like some unstable crate that is just blocked on this. That like is will... there? Yeah. What is the driving uh, feature or driving need? I guess I think it's you know the, the... yeah. I don't know because I, I I feel like. Driving is just like Petro of just like stabilizing things that can be stabilized, but like maybe it's better to just not, not if you know it creates a sort of complicated set of rules about what's allowed and what's not allowed. Yeah, I agree. So, is it, um, so I would like to solve the under the reason we can't just let make them allowed on modules in general and then like you know. So it sounds like that basically has to do with uh, some question marks about it, right? Like it's not like a fundamental problem. It's like we have to decide to answer this yeah. question. Yeah. Yeah. So we could work on that, I guess. Yeah. Um, so it seems like there are some different questions. Um, seems like Nido had one around functions and folks has questions around different things. Yeah. Uh, good questions. Um, maybe you can like separately ask those questions. Uh, and also about the use case. Uh, just one note, Petrochenko will start um, a new job uh, soon, so he will be less available uh, available for next week. Yeah, true. Um, so let's see if we can record the question and then we're done. Someone should write them up though. Um, uh, what is the driving use case here, if any? Um, and what, what was the final question? In line why attributes. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. why not bang attributes on modules? Um, and then in general, we were not sure if it made sense to stabilize um, sort of modules without like, uh, Without handling the general case, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Partly, yeah. Versus handling all cases, i.e., as it before, all cases are. Resolved. Yeah, and and it would be good, I think, to elaborate around the problems in general with why we are only like why are we yeah. only doing it part way? Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, who will write this comment? Folks, maybe? Yeah, I can. Good. Cool. Right. Um, okay. Uh, um, talk minutes. About, yeah, I was going to say. Okay, why don't we talk about. Um, Thing, unless there's anything else that's small here. Well, well there are a, bunch there are a few other small ones. I don't know how urgent they are. Here's a real quick one, maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Let's talk about this uh, one. It's exciting. We, 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 a long time back, before 1.0, if I recall, Patrick Walton came to my desk and was like, it's unsound if we have foo at, through a pattern like foo at some bar where there's a binding inside the at and outside because of the way the AST project are working. He was like, I propose that we just disallow that. What do you say? And I said, that's a good idea. 
that sounds easy. So we did that. Great. Uh, but now we've refactored and we have an NLL bar checker and it doesn't have a problem with this. Um, the soundness concerns no longer apply. So Felix would like to restore the ability to, to do this. Basically, um, you would like to remove the code in check match at the end, the yeah. uh, at binding capital messages. Right? Probably. Right. Yeah, we basically, we have some code that disallows it. We can take that code out. In NLL, what happens is this all gets desugared to like simple borrow statements. So it's not really an issue. Um, so do, so um, do, we, do we have a good test to, to add back to check the soundness of I don't think we have any tests we'd have to make. We had tests that went away. Actually, it's, we said in the original PR that Patrick removed that we better put all these tests back when, they, when we bring this back. Okay. Um, yes. But, I, but I'd be happy to make tests as part of this process. It's more a question of like, does anyone think this needs an RFC? No. I don't think it needs an RFC. No, I don't, um, I, I don't I, think so. Actually, speaking of Frank rooms, this is sort of a Frank room we could remove. It's yes. Exactly. Okay. I think you just go for it. Of course, we want to. I think we want to report and let's see in the end. But yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah, that's happy. I'm happy to work on that too. Cool. Uh, you can probably summarize our conclusions. Yeah, yeah. I'll write it. Up. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um. This one is worth mentioning. Oh, I think we're not going to do anything. Which one? If you're casting a function reference to a pointer, they, so there. if you had a function foo, it's a zero size type. If you have an ampersand that, that's a reference to a zero size type, which we now compile out. If you cast that to a pointer, you used to get some garbage value, you now get one. Uh, somebody noticed this. It probably falls into that line of unspecified behavior, actually. <laughs> uh, so I think it's okay that it changed. And in particular, it looked like you got a pointer to a function before, but from what we can tell, you didn't. That you just got a pointer to, like, somewhere in your code, and not an actual function. Uh, like, it didn't materialize the function, um, which seems not great. <laughs> so. Weird. Oh, I'm, uh, this is probably the same thing that changed the pointer values of promoted zero-sized arrays. Yes. Yes, probably. Um, yeah. This seems like exactly what this should do, because you got a R value static promotion to a ZST. Yeah. And I think we want to keep that optimization. So we're not going to change anything. Um, so, so the conclusion is one fix, basically? Yes, I think that's right. Um, yeah, numeric values of addresses are not stable. All right, I'm going to run for one more. Hope we can just quickly move through it. Auto fix. So we we migrated from try to r hash try on the 2018 edition. Some people have a bunch of code that's using that, and it looks ugly. They can use Rust format to normalize this away. Somebody proposed that we should implement a, some new lints to do it automatically, sort of. And I want to say no because it's annoying. The reason we didn't do it in the first place is that there's subtle inference implications that are hard to get right, and uh, nothing really changed about that. Yeah, the, yeah, exactly. Um, me and Nico were talking about uh, this in the pre triage and we concluded that sort of this is exactly the sort of lint where we will introduce bugs uh, if we try to fix it. It just seems like a repeat of something we already said. So, yeah. right. So I should leave a comment, or somebody should. That one needs a comment. Who's going to leave a comment? I'll do it. So. Okay. Um, okay. This we're not doing right now. So let's talk about try. We got through a lot of stuff. We have 15 minutes. Or bang, rather. Bang. So I actually, I started, okay, I don't know if everyone's been following along. So we op central closed down the old FCP, opened a new one. This was procedurally questionable, but I'm going to not talk about that in great depth right now because I think we've dealt with that on the thread. But the main thing that's happening and the main like technical question at hand is uh, 
how do we feel about the change in fallback, which is a technically, or which is altering our behavior. It falls under our rules of we're allowed to change inference, but it is one that has been known to cause problems and it's a longstanding inference interaction. And there's been some, so Boats has a good summary here. I was trying to create a sort of revised thing that included this material, but I didn't get that far. Um, and in particular, there's been a lot of comments that I didn't really understand <laughs> about the objective secret. So if someone else has been following, maybe they can pick it up from there. I think they're trying to fix the issue. Yeah. So there's been a lot of work on trying to like work make, around this change kind of yeah which is i think something that should be done if we're going to make the change good right. yeah if we're going to make the change that work needs to get done um there are a few options right we could we could not make the change at all we could make it on the 2018 edition boundary which the only thing i see about that complicates that is we would have to figure out how to like we're supposed to give warnings if your code's going to break when you go to a new edition yeah. and we have to figure out how to give warnings which was not easy to do um like originally that was a challenge because this is kind of like there's an inference variable it's unbound and suddenly it becomes unit and that can cause things way downstream and it's sort of hard to tell it's also worth mentioning that uh, edition like um Having the behavior dependent additions is not for free. Uh, we have to like lock things in the compiler and uh, get yeah. and get the addition from the span, and we have to like uh, yeah. yeah, it's not free. Traverse that through the compiler, it's no problem. Yeah, and I I find the it's really hard to actually attribute inference to any particular span to even make the decision. The persuasive part of that. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't think anyone wants that either. On the thread, there's no one who's proposed, at least the current thread. Like, mainly he'll just want mitigation to try to help people who are currently going, who are going to get UB because of this change. It's very, like, I'm sympathetic to that, but it's very hard to do in this case. Um, like, we, it's, since it's, it, it's hard to statically detect and, uh, and such. So, I mean, you right. can. So, well, you can't tell his respect when I'm going to get UB, but you can. Otherwise, it wouldn't. We wouldn't have to have it be UB. Um, yes. But, like, like one thing that's an option is, like, some sort of lint that warns whenever the inference changed as a result of this by just running both and seeing the differences, which should be off, off by default, but can be something that is easy to turn on and that we like communicate about this change in a way that people could think, oh, I have this problem and this, and now I can check for it, right? Yeah. Nico, uh, since you know this part of the compiler best, probably. Well, that would be easy to do. The problem is it's very coarse, um, which is why I assume those say it would be allowed by default. Yeah. Uh, like if we don't, the problem is that the, just the fallback changing isn't enough like it's really a question of did that fallback then get used to make some conclusion we might be able to do a little bit better like maybe we can't trace it to be sure that we might be able to find out sort of for example so uh, not just did fallback occur but did unit from some source get used <laughs> to make a result I don't know. And it seems like it, it would have some false positives, but maybe that's it's those are not mm, large enough. Um, that's so why I'm that's, saying off by default because I do think it would be very difficult to have this always warn everyone who like. Yeah, but I'm thinking that like um, if you turn them to warn in in some specific compilation or like. Uh, and to remove cat lens, then um, th there are few enough that, that you can like look at them. Yeah, well, and a human can look at them. Yeah. Do we have? I, I, sorry. That seems true. Like it doesn't seem like we're gonna, like. We'll have. Yeah, we have to do a little experimenting to see how precise we can get it. I haven't really looked at it very closely. I just know I don't like how we did it before. Do we? Um, one question I have is: Do we have any sort of data on the current impact? 
I don't think so, right? On the current what? Like an expected number of crates. We, are... we, we did crater, but that was quite long ago. So, yeah, so crater yeah. had a problem that obviously is obviously mainly used on like Apple platforms and crater doesn't right. test. And Apple all platforms. It's such a nightmare when it comes to CR. So, yeah. which also means it's likely not in like users, like there can be production users who are obviously in the wrong way. Like this really seems like the reason why this seems so serious is that it's like just every worst possible scenario. Like probably people don't have CI on their Apple platforms. Um, right. All they're doing to get this error is just not omitting the like type like they normally have to. Like, I want to consider whether I, I've sort of gotten this a little out of my scope, but I feel like I'd like to hear the positive argument for changing this again. Uh, like, because it wouldn't be the end of the world if we didn't, right? Like, and we just don't have the, a problem? The worst possible choice Why? for a fallback for diverging expressions, I think. Like, it's the uh, it's surely not the worst possible choice. Strange. 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 The, the part I'm not sure about is we seem like when I turned this never type thing off, I get really weird behavior of like, let x equals panic that makes x not be a bang. And that's just strange to me. Is that part of this fallback logic or is fallback logic separate yeah. from that? I, I, my understanding is, yeah. So here's what happens. And it's like sort of annoying, right? When you get a unit when it should be just unifying fine until the type that it's supposed to be, you know, like. Well, what's going to happen if you write this is, is the type of X is going to be an inference variable. Okay. And then if, if you use it in some way that constrains it, then fine. It gets constrained to whatever that is. The only time when fallback occurs is when, if the rest of your function has no opinion about what X should be, uh, then we will choose unit today. And the only reason you might care about that is if you don't know what X is, but you do know it has to implement a trait. For example, you have like. Mm -hmm. So that, that'll still be, if we choose Bing, it still won't implement that trait, right? Uh, yeah, in fact, our Bing probably implements, Bing implements fewer traits than unit usually. Yeah. So that's why people notice sometimes a compilation time when we made this change. Um, because some people stopped compiling because there right. used to be unit and now it wasn't. But it um, also implements more sometimes because things like error. Yeah, it's sort of a mixed bag. It just implements a different set and implements them differently. Um, and I forget, I went through and looked and there was definitely, bang was not always what you wanted. That was for sure. <laughs> unit, sometimes you did and sometimes you didn't. There's, there wasn't really a right choice here. Um, seems like the only difference is uh, looking at the inputs right now. It seems like unit has like range bounds and two socket address. I think an exact case where you didn't want it. What was it? Uh, oh, it was something to do with deserialize. I don't recall. I have to go what, what I meant with my comment was um, like it's not like this solves. Like the ideal imagination is to by making it bang, it just always works, right? Because it's just bang implements every trait. It's like something that kind of like ideally makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, so like, it's not like changing the fallback doesn't cause people to stop having to like name the type when they do these sort of panic things. Like, yeah. if I have my druthers, we'd have no fallback, but I think that would be horrible. <laughs> too, too late now anyway. Uh, but yeah, it does. Like, so like, it's not always yeah, working, it's for sure. Yeah, I'm just saying that like, the reason to make the change isn't that it makes this less annoying because like, you still are probably going to have to name the type. And if So is there some way that we could focus, find like the versions of these that are more reasonable or somehow, or to say when you do that, that an assignment like that is a constraint in the inference, and then it depends on coercion somewhere else, or? The last time I went through this and tried to find a better set of rules, I failed. 
<laughs> I found rules. They were different. They handled, like they solved some cases, but they made other cases work worse. And I was like, okay. This is, um, yeah, I remembered something like if you try and use X, you don't get coercions out of it because it ended up being a unit, which isn't what I wanted or something like that. So for me, the sort of the thing that I am having trouble with here is that like, this is not, we don't need to make the fallback change at the same time that we make the, that we stabilize the bank type. And uh, mm -hmm. there was a separate proposal in February to stabilize only the never type, which uh, Taylor blocked. And I think that central agrees that like, the idea was that we will never make this fallback change and the fallback change is preferable. So we're going to block stabilizing until we make the fallback change. But it's been, you know, eight months now and we haven't until just now had any work on trying to like resolve the uh, stability concerns that are preventing the fallback change from happening. I think that was and so I was, we... like, Well, I, just, I would just like to move forward with the, the stuff that we can stabilize immediately that is like people have been waiting on for years that doesn't have these kinds of, that, that doesn't have any breaking change aspect of it. So I think the main reason we didn't make any film is because we were working on the reservation and the stuff and stuff. And it's now we resolved. Right, we did, we did, that was, that blocked both proposals and that's now been resolved, which is great. That's true. But it's still true that, uh, I mean, we didn't, for whatever reason, we didn't make a lot of progress and there is the usual sort of, I mean, it is still true that objective C create, even if it has a fix, it sounded like it's kind of not just enough. You can't just fix the crate alone. You have to fix the consumers or something. Yeah, it's a, a bug that people can have by using it naively basically. And there was a lot of uh, outstanding fallout and it's kind of that annoying long tail of getting people to upgrade their cargo locks and all that crap. Right. Um, so it seems a, hmm. like they can, like you can make a, a breaking change to Directive C to make this error impossible, but that's you know a breaking change that I is currently written code against it. So, so why are they linked? So why so why do we feel that is uh, like why do we feel that never attack is important? What what are the aspects that we do you mean so in general, general, or or like they have to create they, what people do right now is to create an empty enum, which then can't be coerced to other types, and everyone has their own empty enum type, and never is just uh, superior for all of those use cases. Yeah, but like so, yeah. They, the coercion is the big one for me. Yeah, I also have return never already, even though it's not a type, and this will simplify, sure. like unify that with. Like return option never can now happen and stuff like that. The the coercion is there a specific reason why all MT nums don't have that coercion? That that seems why isn't that the case? For the same it, reason that not all empty structs have everything that unit does, basically. We considered it, we decided against it for various reasons. I mean one of them would be that the logical extension is not necessarily all empty nums, but all uh, I guess you can draw a line anywhere, but all uninhabited types, and that's too big. Um, like, it would be hard for us to determine if a type is uninhabited, I think, even if we were to decide if we should do the coercion. Um, I guess we could, I don't know. It I think we want, I think like we felt somebody, like just having, like it was not obvious that every type should behave that way, um, and that Bang was fairly, like, that was the point of Bang. Sort of was to yeah. be the would be the type that is unstantable and it gets coerced to other types. But well, that seems strange to me, but okay. Uh, yeah, it could go either way on it. That was the decision we made. It's sort of like how our new our, like our, our when, when you create a structure in Enum, you're creating a new type and the like right. Sure. Like exactly what Scott said about a uh, unit struct doesn't have the same behavior as unit because they're not they're not coercible back and forth because they're not the same type. Yeah, but bang is yeah. also what we want to be able to have main return result of bang, for example, things like that. Right, and like that we yes. Yeah. Go ahead, Beth. 
just the way we language. Like we we essentially stabilized. We had Bing in some form at 1.0 from having this return Bing syntax that like even though it's not a real type. And so oh, yeah, I think with respect to unit types, well, they are inhabited. So I mean, they can have different properties like uh, as proof tokens for for a different work, right. but. Are you trying to like revisit whether we have the bank type at all central? Sorry, I just wanted to establish what the line of questioning is leading towards. So I, I'm trying to, so my, my questions are around like, is uh, stabilizing never without the fallback uh, loops enough? I, I think one of, one of the main reason and one of the main rationales um, that the ERC makes is around the dead code elimination and we, and from what I can tell, if we don't change the fallback, then that that reason goes away. Um, it also, uh, I don't think so. That's interesting. Hmm. I mean, I think the fallback, like, like we can see the code is dead. We don't need the fall. We don't care what type is given. So we definitely. Yeah. Have but okay, we're running out of time now. I got to run. But um, it seems like we want to talk about this a little more. But this is an interesting turn. I, I hadn't really thought about stabilizing. Like I separating out the fallback question is somewhat appealing to me. But, I also think it's pretty confusing to like have the never, never type. But well, out of time, as you said. Yeah. All right. Does someone want to try to summarize what we said here? Um, I don't really know. We didn't reach any hard conclusions, but no, I don't think so. Um, maybe maybe the, one conclusion, maybe the one conclusion we did reach is that perhaps we could add lint. Um, do you think that that's easy? So maybe you can implement that. Mm, yeah, we could probably have at least a coarse grain lint for sure. We could just get some data with it. I'd right. be very curious just how bad that lint is. Yeah. Bye, y'all. We'll figure out more later. See ya. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.